Well, a year ago, uh, you know, we didn't like the resource companies, but uh, Rio's had a good result uh, this week, uh, increase its dividends. Uh, we expect the same from Fortescue and, and BHP. Um, so iron ore prices have, have turned around significantly in the last 12 months. They basically bottomed a year ago. Um, they've been very, very strong and stronger than most people have expected and uh, massive cash flow because at the same time, Fortescue's been leading it, but these companies have pulled you know, billions of dollars of costs out uh, and you see commodity prices rising. So the costs have gone down uh, this last 12 months. I've seen that revenue rising. So they're pretty profitable again. Um, so we expect some reasonable increases over the next uh, year or so in those sort of things. Rest of the markets, so-so, you know, no, no real standouts uh, for us, but that's where the big t change I think has been in the last 12 months. Well, they cut them a significant amount, but they're just making a lot of money. So, uh, you know, we think it's better for them to pay back to shareholders. I mean, BHP might pay you know, use it to pay off some debt. Um, Fortescue's already been paying a lot of its debt off and hasn't got that much anymore. So, you know, the doomsayers a couple of years ago were worried about the level of debt of Fortescue and it's, um, it's actually very small now. So uh, what are they going to do? I think they're going to give it back to shareholders. So uh, we certainly hope they do. Um, we think that's the best use of money rather than going out and building another mine. Always tough in a crystal ball five years time because we look at the last five years and, you know, resource prices have been down and up and down. and. Um, yeah, it, it'll depend a lot on, on what's happening in China. Uh, I think the good news, though, and I think this is one of the reasons why iron ore and, and coal actually prices have stayed high, um, is that the Chinese are uh, very focused on pollution. Um, they're obviously focused on growth as well and having a mix of, of growth, but they're, they're focused on pollution because it, it's a real problem over there. And uh, they've been closing down a lot of their dirty um, factories, their dirty steelworks, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, but the best way you can have a, a clean steel work, and you can never have a real clean steel work, but if you put high quality Australian iron ore into a steel mill and high quality Australian coal, uh, you're going to have le less pollution than, if you, than using low quality uh, iron ore and low, you know, and, uh, low percentage of iron ore and, and low quality coal. And if you actually think about it, the, the Chinese have quite a lot of coal and iron ore, but it's pretty low quality. Um, so I think what's happening is that the Australian high quality uh, materials are actually being substituted for the lower quality, and that um, is helping pollution. It's still bad, but it's, uh, it, that's going to help it a little bit if we use that. And you know, I don't see that trend changing. Um, you know, as societies become more affluent, um, we get more worried about pollution. So, uh, you know, I think that's going to be an ongoing theme. So I'm fairly positive about that. We have see more supply coming on board, but if that substitution continues, then prices might stay at these sort of levels.